Sam here from Sheridan Computers. NetGate releases PFSense Plus software version 25.11, and this was released on December the 11th, 2025. We're going to dive in, take a look at what's changed and what you need to know. Sheridan Computers. IT. Communications. Support. So the prominent feature on their website is NetGate Nexus updates. NetGate Nexus is a multi-instance management solution for PFSense Plus and is production ready in 25.11 with new updates. All API endpoints have been implemented and the GUI is now fully functional. In addition to the powerful GUI, an API toolkit has also been provided on GitHub. Licenses and entitlements for managed instances will be available for purchase separately. Additional information will be provided at the product launch for NetGate Nexus soon. PFSense Plus version 25.11 is the requirement for NetGate Nexus. Another noticeable change is OpenVPN. So OpenVPN has deprecated DH parameters that are less than 2048 bits. OpenVPN users will notice that if the update process detects a setting of 1024 bits, then the update process will automatically change this setting to 2048 in the server. So this is something to be aware of if you're using older OpenVPN clients that you don't lock them out. Let's dive into the release notes and have a look what else has changed. So a major update is the base operating system has been updated to FreeBSD 16 current from 15. OpenSSL has been upgraded to 3.5.3. OpenSSH has been upgraded to 10.0 P2. PHP is now on revision 8.4 and VXLAN interface support has been re-added. Noted under security that they've fixed an anti-brute force protection bypass and potential denial of service in SSH guard. A we'll quick look at this. So the SSH guard daemon monitors log files for failed authentication attempts and block sources of repeated failures in the firewall. The log parsing string in SSH guard that matches failed web GUI login attempts match based on word pattern, which is, and you've got the regex there. Now that pattern does not match some valid username characters, including the period. Additionally, when the GUI logs an authentication error, it prints the username in the log message exactly as sent by the client, including control characters such as carriage return and line feed. So the impact here is login protection managed by SSH guards, such as preventing brute force attempts, is not able to detect failed web login attempts for usernames, which are not included in that regular expression, such as those just containing a full stop. If an attacker attempts to log in by passing a username containing a new line, for example, the user interface includes a new line in the login failure message, and when that happens, the full log message is split across multiple lines which appear to be separate log messages to a person reading the logs. There's no danger to the authentication process from this vulnerability, um, but obviously it's not what you want when you're trying to read the logs. So they've included the patch to fix that. So this is new, endpoint independent port restricted cone outbound NAT. Well, that's a mouthful. So this version includes partial experimental support for port restricted cone endpoint independent outbound NAT. I'm not reading that again. This functionality must be manually enabled on a per rule basis. Firewall, NAT, outbound, so to add. So yeah, if we add a new rule, here's that new option. Enable EIM NAT for UDP connections. So this is the new functionality that we mentioned, then you can add that on a per real basis here. Okay, so let's see what it actually is. It's to do with uh, port mappings. So port restricted cone NAT mappings attempt to preserve port and external address mappings for clients when speaking to multiple remote hosts, but in a dynamic way that does not rely on static port NAT. This helps avoid issues with multiple local clients using the same source port to the same remote host. These rules enable a client communicating with multiple remote hosts using the same port to receive the same external IP address and port on outbound connections to any destination. This behavior facilitates use cases such as online gaming, peer-to-peer -peer connections and VoIP. So VoIP that is useful for. Inbound communication from a remote host and port is only possible after a local client initiates a first contact to that remote host and port. While this is more secure, it's not yet capable of full cone NAT, which some use cases may require such as certain types of online gaming. So changes in this version of PFSense Plus software. Hopefully this will get easier to read from here. So authentication. 
They've added support message authenticator in the PHP Radius client. Under backup and restore, the fixed RRD data fails to restore via the ECL. We've got some captive portal love. The fixed captive portal Ethernet rules can block ARP. And fixed reserved dummy net pipes for captive portal can overlap. Under the configuration backend, they've improved file handling of the configuration cache. Kia has been upgraded to 3.0.2 and they've changed the Kia configuration parameter client class which is now deprecated. And then for DHCP IPv6, fixed host names in Kia static leases may not register with DNS. Uh, DNS forwarding, they fixed a PHP error in DNS forwarder host overrides when the language is set to French. DNS resolver, they've changed the update to unbound 1.24.2 to address CVE 25.11411. That's a DNS cache poisoning attack. I'd covered that in a previous video on a different firewall. Dashboard. Fixed. Manually verifying the boot environment makes config changes. And thermal sensors widget does not respect per sensor threshold vals, 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 values. Diagnostics. They fixed the captive portal. Backward sync password value is not sanitized in the status output. For dynamic DNS. They've added preserve other record types when updating IPv4 or IPv6 using DESEC DDNS. Fixed dynamic DNS does not use preferred virtual IP in gateway group. And fixed custom dynamic DNS services ignore the monitor interface. Under gateway monitoring, the fixed an issue where gateway monitoring daemon can unexpectedly use CARP virtual IP as a source IP address. And then directly related to gateways, the fixed gateway list order is incorrect until reloading the page after moving the entries and saving. Hardware and drivers. Fixed an issue with the NetGate 2100 and 3100 LED controller not responding to GPIO CTL. They fixed the Q-Link Marvel 41000 NIC bug. This is to do with uh, crashing and stuff. So they've added support for 2.5 gig SGM2 in BXE driver. And they fixed an issue with the E1000 network interfaces, unexpected link at half duplex. IPsec, strong swan, has been updated to 6.03. IPv6 router advertisements, the fix cannot set RADVD router lifetime to zero. They fixed a bug in the installer, whereby configuration data restored during the installation can be overwritten by hardware specific default values. Interface changes included added support for VXLAN interfaces, added the option to change Q and Q ether types to service VLAN tag, and also been fixed, retain previous Q and Q VLAN tag type value for existing entries on upgrade. Under logging, they've added the option to disable logging of packets blocked due to unmatched IP options, and they've also fixed an issue with syslogd can terminate when a remote log server refuses connections. The open VPN, we've already mentioned the DH parameter change. Now they've also fixed automatic IPv6 gateways for open VPN servers are created with the wrong gateway address. They fixed an issue with open VPN servers will not start with DH parameter lengths less than 2048 bits. And then they've fixed the issue that open VPN does not include client to client in generated configuration for peer to peer SSL TLS servers. Actual operating system fixes. RC.safe core errors prevent boot in ZFS. That's pretty serious. And then they've fixed swap fails to activate when multiple swap partitions exist. As mentioned, PHP has been upgraded to H.4. PPP interfaces. It looks like the uh, PPPoE configuration parameters were not sanitized and that's been fixed. PPPoE interfaces using if underscore PPPoE, which is the new driver. I've done a video on that. Increased error counters due to normal alt Q traffic shaping operations. And then virtual IP addresses on the PPPoE interfaces using the new if PPPoE driver can prevent PPP session termination. Under their package system, fixed error notification and log message, updating repository metadata, returned error code one at boot due to cert CTL race condition. Okay, let's look at rules and NAT changes for firewall. They've added allow floating rules using the match action to match based on IP options. They've blocked non-global NAT64 addresses by default. Refactor PF rule set generation and avoid traffic stalls from unnecessary filter reloads. They've fixed an issue with NAT64 rules using reply to do not forward packets. The fixed filter rule evaluation continues after matching a quick match rule. That's not supposed to happen. It's supposed to match and not move on to the next. They've added support for state killing on gateway recovery for policy routed traffic from the firewall itself. Added endpoint independent port restricted cone outbound NAT rules. I really thought I wasn't going to have to read that again. And the fixed NAT64 rules do not pass traffic when gateway is specified for the rule. 
and update output and parsing behavior for PHP shell PF anchor drill. System logs. The fixed log entries without a host can cause the system log to display in an unexpected manner. Under traffic shaping, using a limiter on a rule with a gateway group limits all traffic through that gateway instead of the host IP address. So there's a lot of bug fixes here. Fix the Korean locale, configuration name is not correct. Fix an issue, PFSense Plus does not work with AWS new instance metadata service. Under upgrade functionality, the fixed PHP shell playback script upgrade config incorrectly replaces running configuration when Nexus is enabled. And they've added a fix for configuration artifacts on upgrade. Under user manager and privileges, the fixed SSH guard does not trigger for the GUI logins from usernames containing unexpected characters. Though those we mentioned before that are not matched by the uh, regular expression. And this we mentioned before, GUI login events from usernames containing special characters or long strings can cause ambiguous or confusing log messages. Those being split across multiple lines. Virtual IP addresses. Fixed input validation text for deleting an IP alias VIP with a fixed input validation text messages for deleting an IP alias virtual IP with an ACARP VIP subnet may reference the incorrect virtual IP. Fixed an issue in the web interface with boot environments page fails to load if PFSense version ZFS property contains new lines and Apple Touch ID face ID probes for site icon files that do not exist. And finally, XMRPC changes. Fixed membership to admins group is lost when synchronizing user changes via XML RPC. Okay, let's do an update. We're on 25.07, which is running on FreeBSD 15. 25.11 is available, so let's go ahead and grab it. Confirm. I'm hoping this doesn't break here. Um, it's usually a good practice to remove any packages especially if you depend on PHP before running an upgrade, but I'm just YOLOing this. So hopefully we won't have any PHP upgrade issues. Okay, so the upgrade's done. As I say, it is recommended to remove any packages first, that, just to make sure your upgrade goes smoothly. Well, we've got the web interface, so that's a good start. Error inversion information. We are on 25.11, and it is... On FreeBSD 16 current. Okay, so we just refreshed that. The system is on the latest version. And version information updated at Friday, December the 12th at 10.57. So that seems to have gone okay. Now, there's not too much that I can show you in terms of added functionality. And I haven't played with NetGate Nexus, but if we go into System, Advanced, if you want to play with this under the NetGate Nexus tab, I just remember this from last time, it can be enabled here. Now, as I did mention, when you do the upgrade process, it's usually a good idea to remove any packages, to take a backup, remove packages, do the upgrade, and then restore the backup. Um, I've not got too many packages which depend on PHP, which is what usually breaks on me. So I've only got the Acme Client, Cron, HA Proxy, IPerf, Nexus, PF Blocker NG, that didn't break on me. We've got System Patches, Tailscale, and WireGuard. So nothing really under there that would have broke for me. And under Patches, we're all up to date and there's nothing to add in there. That's it for me in this video. If you haven't upgraded yet, do the upgrade. Let me know in the comments if you've had any problems. Thank you for watching if you made it this far. I'll see you in the next video.